Hello and welcome to the Savannah Morning News and SavannahNow.com Facebook live stream. I am Will Peebles and today I'm joined by Miss Cody Shelley and we're at the Flannery O'Connor House. Cody, what, what do you do here and what is the Flannery O'Connor House in general? So I am the foundation manager here at the Flannery O'Connor Childhood Home. Gotcha. And this is where Flannery O'Connor, the noted Southern author, spent her first 13 years here in Savannah on Lafayette Square. So it's in this very house, like we're in... We're standing in the house itself, that's correct. The childhood living room. The this childhood is, front parlor, as a matter of fact. That's pretty awesome, that's cool. And on Sunday, you guys are having your annual event, which is probably one of my favorite events in Savannah. It's really cool and quirky and weird and just... It's uh, her birthday festival. That right? is right. It's our annual Flannery birthday party, parade, and festival. It's also paired with Savannah's local author day. So we'll have local authors, we'll have art, there's chicken poop bingo for the kids, which is always a big winner. Uh, we'll have tea and coffee provided by the Sentient Bean, as well as birthday cake for everyone, and it really culminates in a fabulous parade. My personal favorite parade, not to knock that big other one, uh, here in Savannah. It's quirky, it's fun, uh, and it's, a, it's, it's really a chance to connect our community with Flannery's house here in Savannah. Yeah, it's really cool. So speaking of connecting the community for the house, let's do that, right? All right. So you guys give tours of the houses, and uh, today you're... You guys have agreed to give me kind of like a little tour of the house. We don't have to go through the whole thing if you don't want to, but sure. we're here in the living room. We we'll see some pipes and stuff. T tell me about the stuff. Absolutely. We're going to hit on a couple of my favorite things. Um, first, I'm going to show you Flannery's, uh, the portrait over the front mantel. This is Flannery's cousin, Katie, and Flannery O'Connor grew up staring at this picture, which kind of makes sense if you read Flannery O'Connor as an adult. Uh, this is the lady that helped her family out when she was a child. This is really the family's benefactor here in the home. Her name was actually Catherine Flannery Sems, so that's the little lady that our Flannery was named for. Uh, she's a little creepy, but my other favorite in this room is Flannery's childhood carriage. Oh. And this is an original as well. This was actually found up at Flannery's uh, family home in Milledgeville, Georgia. It's very fancy. It has Flannery's initials in gold on the side. It's wood and wicker. It's very high end and it's her original pram. So we're really lucky to have it. As a baby, as a baby. As a baby, wow. absolutely. <laughs> the, the Pringle of the Southern Gothic genre. Yes, indeed. <laughs> That's neat. Kind of creepy bunnies in there. Creepy what bunnies in there. Where, Slightly where creepy is a theme for Flannery. There's a great <laughs> photo of Flannery up on this wall that we like to share as well. She's looking a little mischievous on our left, uh, but she's about to write a little story with a pencil in her hand, and she's with her friend Betty Jean in this picture. And my favorite thing about this picture is that Betty Jean gave this to us. Oh. Uh, back in the 1990s when our house was being restored, there were lots of Flannery contemporaries here in Savannah that were happy to tell us all kinds of great details about their friendships with Flannery. That's, that's actually really cool because it's almost like crowdsourced history and local history at that. I don't know, let's see. So how long has the house been around, the museum, as, as a museum? So we were founded as an organization in 1989 by a group of professors from Armstrong University. And 1989 began an 18 year renovation process. Nice. Uh, throughout that time, the home was open on and off for visitors, but we've been completed as a museum here really since about 2007. And now we're here open six days a week. We get visitors from all over the world. Cool, yeah, let's move on. Let's all right, let's stuff. head this yeah. way. We've got an original love seat that belonged to the family. Anything in the house with a red ribbon belonged to the family during their time here. Everything else is of the period and donated. And we're going to head through to the library and dining room. Make sure you check out these beautiful original 1856 Georgia Heart of Pine floors. We're going to be walking along one of the original 30 foot long planks. This has no oh. seam. It's our favorite plank in the whole house. So Best come on through. Best plank in the whole place. Best plank in the house. This is one of our favorite things to show off. Over here we have some of Flannery's childhood books. Would you like for us to turn that light off as the glare? No, you're good. Great, all right. At six years old, little Flannery O'Connor decided that she was a grown up and she announced to her parents that she would no longer call them by mom and dad. She only called them Regina and Ed for the rest of her childhood. And she got rid of just about all of her toys. We actually only have one toy left. 
But the best thing she does is she starts writing in her books. And right up here at the Fairy Babies, her childhood copy, you can see she's written her opinion in pencil. Lovely handwriting. <laughs> she's written, not a very good book. <laughs> And she even initials it, which is the best part. She's totally owning it as a little girl. In fact, there's a copy of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland up at Emory in Atlanta, in which Flannery has written worst book since Pinocchio. <laughs> so she's very, very opinionated as a young lady. I'm going to show you uh, one of my other favorite things in this room is Flannery's 1945 undergrad yearbook. And we're going to pop over here and check this out. This is our library. You can see it's full of artifacts. And this is my favorite photo of Flannery as a little girl, or as a young woman, excuse me. <laughs> this is her at 20 years old. She is dead center in this bottom left photo. Oh, I'm so deadpan she is. She's so, so salty, isn't she? This is her as the editor of the Lit Review in college. She graduates at 20 years old from college, and she is the boss in this photo. And you can really tell that she's in charge. Yeah, like everyone around her is kind of just smiling and stuff. Flannery's like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Flannery's ready to get back to work in this picture, for yeah, sure. Yeah. For sure. Uh, we're going to head along through and pop in the kitchen real quick. Cool. Come on by. We have a very modern kitchen of the time. In fact, we have one of the very first electric refrigerators in all of Savannah. Flannery's family was very, very well equipped. Uh, this is mostly thanks to that benefactor, Cousin Katie. This is our GE Double Coil 1930 Electric. And GE, if you're listening, we are working on getting this restored, so we'd love your help. We <laughs> use it for storage, as a matter of fact. It's built like a safe, as you can tell. <laughs> it's pretty hefty. And little kids from the neighborhood during Flannery's childhood would knock on the front door and ask to see this guy. That's how popular it was. If you turn around, you'll see our Magic Chef stove. And this has been fully restored. This is a beautiful piece that belonged uh, to the time period. Uh, Flannery's parents had a very well-equipped kitchen. They actually had a gas line and electricity, which means they're better equipped than we are now because these days our house is all electric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a few great period to uh, tools of the kitchen. The one we really like to point out is the butter dish. Y'all, we are really serious about butter here. We do not mess <laughs> around. And this belonged to the family. It was given to us for the museum specifically. So just the butter went in that. Like, just butter. Oh my god. Significant butter dish, you guys. A great deal of butter. <laughs> A significant amount of butter. Um, and then the last room I want to show you is our sunroom. It's really the most beautiful space here in the downstairs of the house. Come on through. Oh, look at the window. I like the window. <laughs> door is gorgeous. This door was actually on the front of our house when Flannery was a little girl and it was moved back here in the late 1960s when our house was turned into apartments. We are just incredibly lucky that it survived many years of renters and tenants before our restoration because it is a gorgeous original piece. It's really quite lovely. When we open the door, you get a beautiful view of our courtyard. It's not authentic to Flannery's childhood, but it's a very lovely Savannah courtyard. And this was actually designed for us by Claremont Lee, who's a real famous uh, landscape architect, mm -hmm. one of the first women in the country to have a landscape architecture degree. That's really cool. What's so special about this backyard is that our little Flannery O'Connor famously teaches her favorite chicken to walk backwards mm -hmm. in this backyard, and it becomes an internet news, or I'm sorry, a newsreel sensation, and she's <laughs> on the internet now. Right. You can see her on YouTube with her favorite chicken, but the big secret is that it was all a hoax because the chicken never cooperated for the cameras, and it's actually backwards footage of the chicken so oh, you'll have to look her up on YouTube that's really interesting that's, cool. <laughs> no, that's awesome well yeah well thank you so much for this tour thanks uh, for coming by guys we're here every day we'd yeah. love to see you anytime yeah for sure so um, what, what do you like about Flannery you work here you are very well versed in Flannery O'Connor and as well as the things of her childhood as well demonstrated by this but why, like, why what is it what is it about Flannery that you like is well, it the writing or yeah, I love her writing. She doesn't just have a gift as a writer. She's very readable. She writes dialogue beautifully, but there's something about her that's really timely. She's writing about a very specific time and place, but it's also really timeless. It really speaks to our current world and the themes that we're all facing now. Um, her Catholicism is really fascinating, and the little bits of beauty and grace and redemption that you have to seek out in her stories are 
um, things that we should all be looking for in our lives. So I think she's really fascinating in that way. That's very well put. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Always. And uh, on Sunday, we'll have all this information in the comments down below. We'll pin it up at the top for you guys. You'll be able to find when you'll come to the parade. Uh, it's on Sunday at what time? From 1 to 4 o'clock. Nice, Lafayette nice. Square. And you guys are running tours that day. As we well, will be right? open to the public. Absolutely. Anyone that wants to come by and see the house is more than welcome. And a good tour is not hard to find. <laughs> Have a good day, guys. Thank you.